So you've heard that string is the thing. OQG is the key. Now get ready for... I worked really hard for that one. The implied joke was dots in a plot. Right, so we're actually talking about quantum gravity. You may have heard of string theory. You may have heard of loop quantum gravity. I'm going to introduce you to a new, perhaps novel, theory of quantum gravity. This is called causal set theory. So causal set theory was first described in 1987 by a series of four authors whose names I'm not going to worry about. They proposed a radically different way of approaching the problem of quantum gravity, that is, how do we describe gravity on a quantum scale? And the reason that problem is hard is because, as far as we know, gravity is really just the curvature of space-time, and usually physics takes place on space-time, so what would it mean to quantize space-time itself? So what causal set theory proposes is that instead of having a smooth, continuous space-time, space-time is really just a zoomed-out version of a whole bunch of discrete points. Each of those points would represent a space-time event, which is a position coupled with a time. And the idea is that on this set of points, there is a relationship on them, known as a partial ordering. That is, in this set of points, you can have one point that is in the future of another point, and if that's the case, you might join those two points by an arrow pointing from the first one to the second one. So the key here is to divorce this set of points from a background space-time on which it lives. These set of points are the space-time. But now we've established a causal ordering, basically what tells you what's past and what's future. And an interesting fact about general relativity is that once you have a set of causal relationships between points describing your space-time, that almost entirely determines the structure of your space-time. The only thing that's missing is that you could stretch and shrink your space-time, and the causal ordering can't really tell the difference about that. So all we do to account for that stretching or shrinking is we just say the volume of a region is equal to the number of points in that region. And now you've basically normalized the stretching and shrinking, so you've completely determined the space-time. This is encapsulated by the causal set theory slogan, order plus number equals space-time. This is really surprising, right, that you could completely describe a space-time just by a set of orderings on a set of points and a volume? That seems kind of strange, but it's true. By the way, we would actually be talking about 10 to the 139th power of points per cubic centimeter, so that's probably why we haven't seen the space-time discretization yet. But anyway, everything that I've described so far is purely classical. The question is, how would we do quantum gravity here? But now we have a Lorentz invariant discretized space-time, which means that we could do quantum mechanics to it. The actual details of the space-time quantization is a little bit tricky, and I'm not going to go into it, but rest assured, it can be done. Now, I know I didn't go into a whole lot of details here, and you might be wondering, why would I care about causal set theory? What benefit does it have over string theory or loop quantum gravity? And it has one really strong thing going for it. That thing is that this model actually predicts the cosmological constant of our universe, and that prediction was made like nine years before it was observationally measured. And that's a really, really good thing for a model to be able to do. So I'll leave you with this. Is space-time really just a smattering of points?